All right, the next topic after hierarchy is I mentioned using a grid. So, <clears throat> so grids are a framework of guides that form the underlying structure. So if you've ever worked on graph paper that has all the little squares, that helps you draw things in a certain scale. If you've worked on line notebook paper, in a way, that's a baseline grid. That's showing where the bottom of all your letter forms should be. So grids bring order, unity, and a sense of identity. So if we had one paragraph out here, another one here, another one here, it's kind of like that Yale Art School website that looked like a hot mess. So grids are very important, and you can turn them on in InDesign. You can make them with guides in any software. Um, they're very important, though, for planning out your layouts. So the golden section, or the divine rule, or the golden proportion, it's got lots of different names. Um, this is this shape that's a rectangle that's basically a 5 to 8 ratio. And here's the very loopy decimal symbol. But basically, when you make a perfect square out of half of it, the rectangle that remains on this side, you can tip that over and make a perfect square. And then what's left over is another rectangle going this way. You can make a perfect square and you can just keep going and going and then you see kind of this nautilus shape. Um, ancient Egyptians and Greeks looked for the most efficient and harmonious use of space, and we actually also see this um, in nature. So this has been around long before design principles, like we think of them, came about. It was just the golden section, the golden rule. Um, <clears throat> using this divine proportion, it's got all different names, in web layout, if you have a 960 pixel layout, you can divide the first chunk, the square over here, as 593, and then leave this rectangle over here. So you see a lot of websites where something is like, this is kind of the sidebar, and they keep their content over here. That's something you're probably familiar with seeing. Um, some other terms to understand, and this kind of goes to what we were just um, talking about, is if this is your full color part, we talk about having the bleed go off in A, the trim line being right here, and then this is the safe zone, how it's in one eighth of an inch. Gutter jump refers to, in a magazine spread, if you have a photo that goes from one page to the other, it literally jumps the gutter, and you have some of it on one page and the rest on another. So, lots of different grids, types of grids. Manusip manuscript, column, modular, baseline, all these different things. So, a manuscript grid. This is kind of like um, sort of what you did with Peter Pan, not entirely, but notice how there's so much more extra room on the lower half and the outside edges, and that we talked about was, that's where your hands hold it. So it can be a little tighter on the inside, but we want that breathing space on the outside. Column grid, this is very typical. So when you set up your InDesign project, how many columns are you going to have? Three, five, and the thing is, you don't have to keep content only in one column. It doesn't have to be that boring. You can see down here, the <coughs> photo spans column one and two and the gutter in between them. So it spreads across there. It can go across all three. It could just be in these two. But it is a good way of setting up your document and providing some um, breathing room. So maybe leaving this open and just having captions. I think our textbook is like that, where the edges tend to have um, extra information, and the inner two-thirds of it is where the bulk of the um, writing goes. So more options on a web layout using that 960 idea. You can have a column over here on the left-hand side where navigation goes. It can be skinny. It can be a little thicker, very thick. It can be on the right. It could be at the bottom. So when you lay this out in columns and grids, you have lots of options with your layout design. Oops. <clears throat> so each of the grids in this figure leaves a distinct imprint on the resulting layout. So you can see how they use columns differently and spanned some, um, made it look a little bit easier to read. This one's kind of unique with the main bulk of the content down the middle and then smaller columns on the edges. Here's just some example of different layouts. And again, this is how you would set it up on your document. Because being rectangular and horizontal are web layouts. Different options for that. 
Okay, here's a modular grid. It's a bunch of squares with equal gutters between them. And in this layout, you can contain things to inside the module, or you can span. So it gives you a very easy, clean layout. When you need to put information in, it's very simple to figure out where to put it. In this case, it's two columns, but they're actually spanning two grids over here and two here. Okay, baseline grid. This is important when you have a lot of text. Um, when you use a bigger type style next to a smaller type style, quite often, unless you turn on the baseline grid, it's not gonna line up. This is gonna be, if this has like 10 point on 12 point letting, this is gonna be sucked up a little higher. And visually having these two next to each other being a little bit off is bothersome. So the baseline grid is something that you can do in InDesign and you can tell your type to snap to this baseline grid. Very important when you're doing a lot of different type on a page, like a book layout or a textbook layout, and you have different type sizes being used. The hierarchical grid um, is something like email. We think about that. The left-hand side or like my computer, you click here and it expands what's happening here. You click on one here and it expands over in this part of the grid. So how we navigate to get what we want in this big chunk has to do with the hierarchy, hierarchy of these first two columns. And then back to the web, the 960 grid, um, each of the columns and gutters is exa exact multiple of 10 pixels wide. All the columns are one in one row or equal width. So by combining these in different ways, you can do a lot of complex layouts that are very versatile. So. Using this concept, you can have full width, half width, thirds, quarters, or 10 columns themselves. So here's kind of an example of this 10 column grid overlaid on this website. And you can see how the boxes at the top span two and the gutter between them equally. And the text below it is spanning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it makes it very easy to position and keep things clean. It also helps with readability and telling the end user what to look at, where to go, how to navigate the page. All right, that is it for grids. Pretty simple. You've probably, did you talk about it in design fundamentals a little bit, I'm guessing? Although you didn't have a lot of software at that point? No? Okay. Teacher, quit. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Ignore. <laughs> See ya! <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to give you your next homework project right now before I allow you work time. And the work time, just so you know, you can redo your Peter Pan, turn it in with the handwritten notes that you took with your friend, and turn in your clean copy if you want some more points back. Up to you. And turn in your ad that you redid with the one that you were gonna turn in and any comments and feedback and then a clean printout also. Okay, I wanna see what you learned today. So that one has to be turned in. Peter Pan is up to you. If you feel like you nailed it and you don't wanna bother, that's your call. But I'm giving you a chance to get points back, okay? So those will be due at the end of the day. The project I'm going to give you next is redoing a newsletter thinking about typography rules, and using a grid, a grid that you choose to set up. How many columns is it going to be? Am I going to span? If it's only two, you don't have a lot of options. If it's two column, we're spanning the whole thing. Maybe I make it a five column layout and have some options with it. This project will be due at the end of class next week. We are going to have some work time next week. I'm going to talk to you about a few things, but you are going to have work time. And we are going to do a peer review of this newsletter at about the halfway point. So maybe 10, 10, 30, however far you are, we're going to get some peer review on it. So in Blackboard, what you're going to be doing is, my glasses, <clears throat> You're recreating a document layout using design principles you've learned so far using hierarchy and grid system. This is going to be printed on 11 by 17 paper and folded in half to create an 11-17 document. 
The pages you are laying out are the outside spread only. Page one and four, which also means front cover and back cover. I'll show you that in a minute. Your client is printing only in black ink, so if you use color, it's pointless. They're using black ink only. Um, no bleeds are to be used. So think of like a church newsletter or something where they don't have the funds to trim it down and make it really pretty. Um, all of the information provided, the parent news right here, must be used somewhere on the two-page spread. So either on the front page or on the back page. Anything else you want to add, you can create fake headlines and use that lorem ipsum filler text as long as it's typeset in readable sizes and uses all the rules that we've talked about. Um, you can add filler articles, text boxes, etc. to fill these two pages. You can use lorem ipsum. You're going to include an artist statement with your comments on your fonts, choices, hierarchy, and why you set up the grid the way that you did. So. Here's something I recommend you always do. If you're making something that folds, get a piece of paper the correct size and fold it up. Make yourself a dummy, right? This is it. Inside, left, and right, simple, right? But look what happens. You might not think about this while you're laying it out. Your front cover is on the left. Your back cover is over here. So if you're ever making a booklet with multiple pages, Keep adding them, make the book physically, and then sit down with it and say front cover, inside front cover, page one, page two, page three, do it all out. And then when you lift it out, your center spread is going to be um, pages, let's see if it's an eight page, five and six, four and five. But page one is across from page seven. Do you understand what I mean when you actually fold this up? Just get in the habit of making yourself a dummy booklet if you're ever doing more than one page. If you're doing a brochure that has three folds, fold it up and then write on it, front cover, inside front cover, inside first flap, inside spread, one, two, three. And then when you flip it around, your center panel is going to be right here. So make dummies for yourself so that you know what you're doing. <coughs> so you do not need to use this logo. Yes, it's called Parent News, but you can redesign that. This is an example of junk that you have to have somewhere in this, anything else to fill it out can be pretend articles or mipsum. Yes, you have to type this out because I want you to get used to filling in copy. Does this have to be a chart? What do you think? If you can display this in a better way, you don't have to put boxes around everything. You see how they fell victim to let's use all these cool different fonts like word art? Don't do that. And I want you also, on Blackboard I say, to research some examples of good newsletter layout. And I just did this one and pulled it up. And some things that I'm just going to click on this one, looking at a tiny thumbnail of it. Do you see how they use three columns? And yet they're not always going over to the edges. This one's bleeding, this one isn't. I told you not to use bleeds, so think about that. But maybe... I hope this shows up now that I click on it. Something like this, where they have a left column with everything that you're going to find inside, but the front page is mainly a big article or a picture or something interesting. If you got this newsletter, would you be super excited to read it? No. You'd want it to be like, what's really going on? What's super important? This is all kind of minor junk, I think, but who knows? So look around for good newsletter design and layout. Think about how you can use multiple columns to do something unique. Um, this one looks like there is no bleed. The photo stops up here, but you can see this column is smaller than this one. So the grids that they use are not equal. It's not two column. They did something unique here. So do something fun. Make it look more exciting. That is going to be due, like I said, at the end of class next week. And we will be doing a peer review at the halfway point. Okay. Any questions on your homework for that? Okay, so the rest of the day you can work. And again, if you want to tweak your Peter Pan and your newspaper ad, go ahead and do that. Turn in the original with marks on it and the original ad. Hopefully you have a printout of that as well. 
and your copy, and you can either staple them or paper clip them up here. So it's two different files. If you want to turn in Peter Pan, but for sure turn in your app. When I email you and I go home, do you want the original with it too? Um, do you have that in a standalone format or no? Otherwise, the one that you had, I kind of oh, I can use that. That's okay. okay when you email it, yeah.